Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Uh, in this video, we're going to be going over whether you should pull for Kokomi, or at least some of the reasonings that should go behind your decision to pull or not to pull, so that you can then take some of these logics and go into other banners if you never watch one of these videos ever again, or if you are going to watch them every time, this at least should help you, you know, figure out whether you want her or not. Uh... First things first, Oz obviously you have to say, and is important, if this is your favorite character, if she is a character you've been looking forward to, you should roll for her regardless of whether, of anything I say here. If she is the character you want, if she is your favorite, go for it. Be my guest. And if you have the disposable income to roll on every single character, go for it. That's not my job to tell you who to and to not to roll on. I just want to give you some ideas and logic of why you may or may not want to roll on this character. So, let's start with probably the most obvious reason of why you wouldn't roll on Kakomi, and that is purely that she is a healer. Now, there's a complete chance that she does other things besides being a healer, but if you notice all the other healers in the game, or at least the ones that are regarded pretty highly, such as Diona, Jean, and Bennett. They all have secondary effects on top of just being healers. And even though Kakomi could technically have, say, Hydro application to uh, rival some of the other healers in the game, or rival some of the best Hydro applicators, we don't know yet. And that might not even be enough of a reason to use her. So I, I want to break it kind of down into different groups, and I'm going to kind of go based on groups. I think if you are a player who is under AR50 and you, you're you newer to the game, you don't have a lot of characters, this is probably a skip. And I'm going to tell you why. It's probably a skip for you unless you already have good supporting units and good DPS units. Realistically, the healer slot is one of the easiest slots to fill up with units we are given readily accessible, as there are some absolutely fantastic four stars that do not require a ton of investment and usage, or uh, resources, but can scale well with resources. Another reason that uh, uh, if you are above that, though, you know, if you're in the AR-50 range, you have yourself a solid main DPS or two. Um, she definitely is worth considering if you want a, a strong raw healer. And especially if you want a strong raw healer for, say, a freeze comp, as she is hydro and probably has very good hydro application to enable a freeze comp. However, freeze comps normally want energy, which Diona being a battery for is a relevant thing, so... That's up to you whether you want to make that trade. Now, I think definitely you should be careful about pooling for her. If you currently lack a powerful main DPS unit, um, outside of obviously the one we get given for free, which is Zhangling, but if you still need a carry for the other side of the Abyss, it is very likely that we will be getting reruns of all three of the Li Away, uh the big Liyue 3, which are the three best DPS units in the game, Ganyu, Zhao, Hu Tao, and picking one of those up generally will be better for your account in the long term, in my personal opinion. Now, let's also talk about maybe a reason you wouldn't necessarily want to get her, but this is a reason that people are bringing up that maybe she's useful, and that is the corrosion mechanic. Now, I can't show you as... I don't have that level of the Abyss Unlock, and it's not even out yet on NA yet. But the Corrosion Mechanic essentially is a mechanic for the 11th floor of the Spiral Abyss right now that makes your enemy, makes your characters lose HP um, whenever they kill an enemy over time. Meaning that having access to raw, high raw amounts of healing is very nice and is almost mandatory for clearing. Now... There's a couple problems with saying that this is a reason that you should 100% full pull for this character and it's game changing. Now, the main one obviously is that this is, at least in my opinion, going to be a relatively unpopular mechanic as in games generally damage that you cannot avoid through any intelligent use of dodges, iframes, 
Anything like that is generally very poorly received, as it essentially just punishes you for being really good at the game. You know, theoretically, in the Abyss right now, you could use no healer and no shielder, and just dodge, wave dash everything if you're good enough at the game. But the corrosion mechanic doesn't make that possible, and I personally think that's kind of stupid. So I do believe this will be relatively unpopular, or at the very least will not be a mechanic we see 24-7 in the Abyss. You might see it pop up from time to time, but I doubt this will be a permanent um, mechanic that sticks around. And if it is, I could be wrong. But even if it is, we still already have access to other strong raw heal units in the game that heal your party. We have, obviously, the one you get for free, Barbara, whose heal is really good. And also, being another Catalyst user, has access to Thrilling, thrilling Tales. And she essentially is just four-star Kokomi, even though people don't like... I don't want to compare them because of power level, but they're very similar characters in identity. They're raw healers that heal a lot for your party. So, yeah. And then, for most of us that have played a long time, you probably have obtained one of the five-star healers uh, in losing a 50-50. And even if you haven't yet... You probably will eventually at some point, so you are almost guaranteed to end up with at least two of these party-wide healers at some time in your Genshin career. So I don't think she is 100% pull because she, you know, you want the party-wide healing. Um, there's even an argument that even though he's not party-wide, someone like Bennett, if built to be an actual healer, just heals so much raw that it actually just straight up doesn't matter um, if rotated correctly. But uh, you shouldn't feel pressure to pool just because you need a raw, or you think you want a party-wide raw healer. If you don't like her character, her design, any of that kind of stuff, or if you're excited about other characters and you're worried about her, say, uh, you know, people like to throw out the term new meta, new meta, but realistically the meta in Genshin hasn't changed since the start of the game. The only thing that's changed is we've realized better what units are good with more uh, with higher levels of investment. There are very few units that are like... The meta is not changed because of Mihoyu's influence on the meta most of the time. It changes because players realizing what works and what doesn't work as well. And then, obviously, you could say the meta changes when they drop in a new unit that does higher DPS, but realistically, that's not necessarily just changing the meta as much as you're just swapping, you know... And Hu Tao, for example, you know, Hu Tao didn't change the meta. Sure, now Hu Tao is the best fire DPS, but she uses the same team as this guy, uses the same team as Glee did. It's just she's... You put her in there now. So I don't think we're going to hit a point where you need that much raw healing. And the problem, obviously, with raw healers, especially if you're someone that's struggling in the game to clear Abyss and get high stars, is that a lot of these raw healer characters, with the exception of Jean don't bring damage. So if you're struggling to beat DPS checks, that means your characters need to be even stronger to be able to take the sacrifice to bring one of these party-wide healers um, and be able to clear the content. So that is something to consider as well. Um, I don't think she'll be bad, but I think much like most of the Inazuma casts we've seen so far, they're very balanced, which I think is a great thing. You know, for a little bit there, when we got Ganyu Zhao Hu Tao back to back, and it looked like, oh no, <laughs> oh no, here it comes, here comes all the power creep, all the ridiculous units coming out. But they've done a pretty good job to not eclipse older units, and we've even found some units that maybe we disregarded in the past are a lot stronger than um, we originally thought. So, that is my personal recommendation. If you are in the market for a healer, and you want a raw healer, you don't have Chi-Chi, or you don't want to build Chi-Chi, you don't have Jean, um, or if you're someone like, let's say, that has a Ganyu comp, and you really want a Hydro Applicator, um, but you don't necessarily care if the Hydro Applicator does damage, you just want there to be a Hydro Applicator, maybe you don't have Mona, um, and maybe you want to use Jing Chu on another team, I think it's perfectly acceptable to pick her up if you want her there, but I think she is by no means a must-pull, and this is one thing that kind of happens in the community, is whenever there's a unit that is most people are skipping, you're going to see a lot of people over-hype her, over-sell her to try to get some, to, you know, try to get some of that copium to justify their purchase. 
but also you see the reverse, which is where when characters are good, you'll see people like be like, oh, but they're not the best kind of thing, right? Like, Ayaka was really strong, for example, on release, but she wasn't better than Ganyu, so there were a little bit of people out there like, oh, why would you roll for her Ganyu's better? It's like, well, if you like her playstyle more, roll for her, and she's a completely balanced unit and fine to have. And I hope this is kind of the the level they keep going forward, which is that if you're in the market for this kind of unit, you can pick them up, but you're by no means forced to because there are other decent options within uh, within the game. I want to thank you for coming out. If you're pulling for Kokomi, I hope you good. I uh, I hope you good luck, and I hope you get her uh, quick. Um, I'll probably do maybe a, a guide or at least a, a video talking about preliminary thoughts on weapons and items for her, even though I don't necessarily have a ton of desire to roll for her myself. I'll probably do one anyway, just because I like that first, you know, those first couple of days trying to figure out how a character works and, like, what what um, kind of items and stuff they use. But uh, I thank you for coming out, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.